Welcome to another OnShape tutorial. Today we're going to go through one of my favorite 3D modeling tools, Sweep. Sweep is one of those tools that needs two things. It needs both a path and a profile. We can use the Sweep tool on a wide variety of activities. Let's go through some examples together. For our first example, we're going to make this bent tube or this sweeping pipe. The first thing we need to do is think about the actual path. What is the path that we would like our shape to follow? I can see that I have a straight line that then turns into an S-curve and ends in a straight line. Now I need to decide what my profile is going to look like. and I really have two good options. I could start out with two concentric circles and then sweep them as an empty pipe, or I could do it as one solid pipe and then shell it later. I'm going to go ahead and do it as two separate circles so that I can do it as an empty pipe. Well, let's get started. Unlike loft, where I want to typically start out with my two profiles, when I'm dealing with sweep, I find I have a lot better luck if I actually start off with the path and then put the profile onto it. So I'm going to go ahead and create a sketch on my front plane. I'm then going to go ahead and put on the straight line. I'm going to use the three-point arc to go ahead and make the S-curve. and then I'll put on my second line. I would like to go ahead and use the tangent geometric constraint to go ahead and smooth some of this out. Now if I had any dimensions that were necessary I'd go ahead and put them on at this time before I went ahead and moved forward. For this activity this is going to be good enough. I'm going to go ahead and finish the sketch and then turn off all of my work planes. Okay, so I now have the path and I'm ready to put my profile on one of the ends. That's where I've had the best luck trying to put them. I can put them into the middle, but the majority of the time I'd either like to choose this end or this end. Hopefully you've already realized that I can't put a sketch on something that's not there, especially if it's not a flat surface. So I need to create my own surface up here. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the plane tool and I'm going to change it from the offset to the point normal. And remember normal means perpendicular. So when I click on point normal, I can click on the end point and then the line. As soon as I pick the line, it will establish a work plane off of that point and then perpendicular to the line that I clicked on. And that's it. That's really all I need. I can now do a sketch on that plane and put on my profile. Now some software packages will actually ask you to project or you'll need to project that dot onto the plane that you're currently working on since that point only lives or exists in that actual sketch. Well, Onshape does a fairly good job of not needing that. I can just grab my center point circle. I can grab that endpoint even though it wasn't drawn in here. I can go ahead and sketch out the outside of my tube or my outside diameter. I can then either offset that in or I can just go ahead and create another circle using the same center point. So now I have a profile that is two concentric circles and I have a path that's already drawn. I don't need this work plane anymore either, so I'll go ahead and turn that off. All right, so once I open up the sweep tool, the sweep tool wants to know the faces or the regions that I would like to sweep. And then I'll have to manually switch over to the sweep path to go ahead and pick that. So I'm going to go ahead and pick the profile that I need. It doesn't know that I'm done picking profiles, so I need to teach it that I'm done doing that by selecting Sweep Path, and I can now either go ahead and pick the pieces individually, or if that's the only thing that actually exists in that sketch, I can just go ahead and select Sweep Path, and I can pick the sketch by itself. And that's really it. There's not a lot to sweep. Now, the idea of starting with the path and then the profile, hope we'll make your successful too. Let's see if we can't run through another example. For this example, I'm going to try to make a paperclip. And I can be honest, I really have a hard time trying to get the exact proportions of trying to make a paperclip look exactly like it's supposed to. So I'm going to go ahead and borrow a paperclip's image from the internet and I'm going to trace it in on shape. Once you have your paperclip image saved, I'm going to create a new sketch. And I'm going to change it from DXF to insert image. I'm going to come down here to import and I'm going to find my image. Once it's done uploading, I can then go ahead and click on it. 
and I can go ahead and drag a window that will select its size. If I needed it to be specific dimensions, I go ahead and put those proportions on the picture now. Uh, for this example, I'm just going to use it as it currently is. So now I'm going to go ahead and trace the image as I currently see it. When trying to create your path, I encourage you to use one of three options. Either try to follow the inside, the outside, or try to draw your line right down the middle. Since I'm going to attach my circle right to the end of this line, kind of like I did for the last one, I'm going to go ahead and try to put mine right down the middle. Great, and now that I have my path done, all that's left is to go ahead and put the profile on it, and I'll use that same work plane. So I'm going to change it from offset to point normal. And again, I could go ahead and pick any of the points, so I'm just going to go ahead and pick this one. Then the last step is to go ahead and choose my profile, and then I can either choose my path individually again, or just go ahead and pick sketch one. Even though there's an image there, it knows it's not true geometry, so it doesn't try to utilize that in the sketch path. I have had somebody ask me, can I go ahead and round those over? Well, not necessarily with the sweep tool, but I could use the fillet tool to do that, especially if I knew the diameter of that circle. So I'm going to go back in, and I'm going to figure out what the diameter of that circle was. Now that I know the diameter of that circle, I can go ahead and fill it with half the diameter and that'll round those ends for me. And since it was a consistent path all the way around, the same fill will work on both ends. And there's a real life example of how I might use the sweep tool. Well, let's see if we can't try to figure out another one. For this example, we're gonna to try to make the coat hanger, and the coat hanger is gonna allow us to see two more issues that you might run into while you're trying to use sweep. I'm gonna start it off the same way. I'm gonna to go to the internet and try to find a picture of a hanger that I'm gonna trace. I'm going to go ahead and trace it up and see if I can't try to solve some of these problems that you might run into. I'll be right back. Okay, great, so I've got my path drawn, and now I'm gonna to try to put my work plane on. So as I come in and I choose plane, change it from offset to point normal, because this is an arc, it really doesn't wanna do what I want it to do. I can pick the end point and the arc, and it'll put on a plane, but it puts it on flat to the shape, and that's not what I want. So I'm gonna to have to change to a different kind of plane. So I'll change this to curve point, and it'll do the exact same thing. It is a point normal, but to a curve. And that gives me the same solution. So now I can go ahead and do a new sketch on it and draw my circle as my profile. So the first problem that we ran into is we had to use a little bit different plane. There is going to be a second problem we're going to run into, and I'm going to show that to you now. And everything seems to be fine until I come to this last step. And as soon as I go to this last step, everything turns red. It doesn't like it when these two lines come to an intersection. I'm guessing that it really can't make a decision on whether it needs to go from right to left, and it doesn't understand the order that I actually clicked on the lines. So unfortunately, I can't allow those to meet. So I need to do something just a little bit different right here at this intersection. So I've gone ahead and drawn this up so that I know these are going to meet exactly where I want them to meet, but I actually need to break this just a little bit. So I'm just going to put an extra little line on here, and I'm going to trim that away. 
I can then go ahead and delete that line, and I know if that extends, it's going to extend right into that intersection, right where I want it to be. Now I can tell you, you do need to get away from that enough. On shape also doesn't like as this shape comes around, that these two shapes overlap each other. So I need to make sure that I've cut that back enough that it's not going to run into itself as it comes around. Well, let's see if I've cut it back enough. So I should be able to just go ahead and pick the sketch, pick my sweep path, and then go ahead and pick all of sketch one. And great, it worked. So the problem is this is not exactly what I want. I would like this to go ahead and complete this up and close this path. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and throw a new sketch on the end of it and finish that sketch. All I wanted that for was so that I could go ahead and extrude that circle and I'm going to change it from blind to up to next and it'll go until it runs into it then extend it back like it was supposed to be originally. Now it appears that that sketch that I just made in Onshape really isn't necessary. Um, without a sketch at all, I can actually just go to Extrude and pick a face and do the exact same thing. The majority of the software package that I've worked with in the past make you go ahead and at least define that face. Um, I'm kind of amazed that it doesn't need that as it goes around, that you can just go ahead and pick a face and you can extrude straight from there. So that's really cool. And great, so that solves the problem with those three things all coming into the same intersection. For this next example, we're going to do a sweep cut, and we're going to try to make this picture frame. If this was made out of wood, I would use something like a wood router. A wood router bit can have extremely complex contours that you can use to guide along the edge of your material to go ahead and cut complex shapes into it, like the picture frame. So this is really the same process that I want to do, is I want to create that profile and go ahead and sweep that around my part. For this activity, you get to choose what kind of profile you actually want to use in your design. But the first thing I need is to get the actual picture frame itself, the raw piece of material that I'm going to go ahead and carve up. So I'm going to go ahead and start off with a new sketch on the front view. I'm going to go ahead and change it to center point rectangle. I'll go ahead and put on my first rectangle, and this is going to be the outside of my picture frame. I'm then going to go ahead and offset that in. And then for this activity, I'm not worried about any specific dimensions, but if you were making this out of a three-quarter inch piece of material, then I'd go ahead and change the depth here to something like three-quarters. Um, but for right now, this is going to work for what I need. Okay, now there's a lot of ways that you could actually put on this profile. And most of the time, what I'd like to do is actually put the profile inside the part. And that can be done. I can go ahead and say plain. I can do an offset plane, and rather than offsetting a current plane like we have in the past, I can also offset just a flat edge. And I can push that into the part. The problem is once you go ahead and start doing your sketch, most of the time you can't really see where you're drawing because you're inside the part. So I can go ahead and right click on the plane, and I can say section view. And if I do that and accept it, then it will stay that way while I'm drawing until I end the section view. But for this example, I'm going to be able to go ahead and draw it right on the end of my part. So I'm just going to go ahead and create a sketch on the end of the part. The problem is, since I'm not inside it, I can't actually see where that profile is supposed to stop. So this is a time where I'm going to go ahead and use or project geometry, and I'm going to grab that inside edge. So now I can actually see the boundaries or the limitations of where my design should go. So now I get to decide on my profile, and I'm just going to go ahead and play and try to create something interesting. For this example, I will go ahead and close the shape off. Most of the time, Onshape can do a pretty good job about identifying these profiles, but just in case, rather than coming back in, it doesn't take me that much time to go ahead and close this off. Great, so this is going to get removed. This is going to be a sweep cut all the way around the part, and it's going to take that away, and hopefully it'll look as cool as I think it's going to. So I'll go ahead and finish my sketch. Go ahead and go to sweep and pick the profile, and it did pick it just like I wanted. 
when you do your sweep path, I have had issues with it doing the outside or picking the outside path. So I am going to go ahead and pick the inside path. And then I want to change this to remove. So there I can see a large portion of what's actually getting removed. And you can see that it really didn't do the entire thing. Since I selected this line, it actually only cut off that portion of it. But as I go around, it will go ahead and do the entire part. Great, I'm happy with that. I think that looks pretty cool. So you can use sweep to create solids, and you can also use sweep to go ahead and remove or subtract material. For our last example, we're going to see if we can't make this squiggly pipe, and there are some really cool things that you can do here. I'm just going to go ahead and try to create a design that goes into multiple planes and along multiple axes. You can see if you can also throw some arcs into it, but you can also go ahead and keep it simple, or you could make it all arcs. But I think there's some really cool things that you can do with sweep. I'm going to go ahead and play around with this a little bit, and when I get ready to finish this one, there's one last thing that I'd like to show you. Okay, great. So I've got this in two different planes, but the problem is how am I going to connect these? How am I going to get these last two to actually end up together? Because I didn't make sure that they actually laid along the same plane or on any kind of parallel plane. I'm going to go ahead and change this plane to three points. And for this one, I'm going to go ahead and select the end point that I'd like to attach to, the other end point that I'd like to attach to, and for right now, I'm just going to make it a straight line, so it really doesn't matter what my third point is. I'm going to go ahead and just pick this one. And that's created a plane that actually hits those three points for me. I can then go ahead and do a new sketch on it, and I'll go ahead and connect that together. Great, and I'm going to try to sweep something along that complex 3D sketch. Uh, the problem is, where do I go ahead and put the profile? Well, I could put the profile on any of these points, but I already have one plane that's here. It's going to look incorrect to start off with, but on shape's smart enough that it's going to fix it. I'll show you why. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this one back on, and I'm going to go ahead and put a new sketch on it. For this example, I'm just going to use a circle. Hopefully you can see the problem where he is when I want to take this circle and send it down this line, that circle's laying flat to that line. It would be great if it went down this one, but it really doesn't make sense to come along this one. On shape's smart enough to go ahead and turn this once you have both of those picked. And I'll show you. So I'll go ahead and say sweep. I'm going to go ahead and pick my shape, but as soon as I start picking the path, this first one's going to be red. It doesn't understand what it's supposed to do until I go ahead and pick the second one. And as soon as I do that, it then understands what I really want it to do. And that's really it. Hope you can come up with some cool things that you can use the sweep tool for.